بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قالو سبحانک لا علم لنا الا ما علمت انا انک انت العلیم الحکیم we started with neurosurgical concern we have already uh, talked in two lectures and uh, we have gone through the anatomical aspect of the brain and uh, just enumerating a few things we have done the uh, we have talked about the different lobes of the uh, brain and uh, uh, we have also talked about the cerebral blood flow and how is the cerebral blood flow uh, regulated in the brain and the regulation of cerebral blood flow is uh, could be auto regulation could be neurogenic regulation could be chemical regulation and uh, uh, then uh, how much is the blood which is going to the brain per minute it's about 40 to 50 mils per 100 gram of the brain tissue so if you got uh, the average brain size is about 1400 grams right so so it's, if it is uh, 40 to 50 mils per 100 gram how much will be the total blood going per minute kitna hoga so multiply 14 with the 50 the 700 or 750 mils will be at the at, at a time going into the brain per minute and and 75 mils is the total csf in the brain and the 75 ml is the blood present in the brain at a time. So all the blood is going into the brain and the venous blood is coming through the sinuses and then forming the uh, 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 jugular veins, internal jugular vein, external jugular vein. Now, so the blood flow should be constant. Going under the vein arterial pressure, then you have got the pressure inside the cranium also, which is called intracranial pressure, ICP. It is the interaction between the cranium and the contents of the cranium. What are the contents of cranium? The brain substance itself, interstitial fluid, then you've got arterial blood and venous blood and CSF. So this is, these are the four things in this. So if one thing increases, if you increase the volume of the blood in the brain, other thing is squeezed out. Normally that's what happened, that's how it is maintained. In pathological conditions, it's very difficult to compensate by the other uh, component of the brain contents. So then the ICP, intracranial pressure, tends to go up. So in most important in our care is the blood drainage from the cranium. Our drainage is mainly venous drainage. That's why we always say raise the head of the patient about 35 degree, 30 to 35 degree head up so that due to gravitational effect the blood should be being drained through the jugular veins and the neck should be straight because if I bend the neck like this it will compress the jugular vein and normally ordinarily it doesn't affect in a normal person but in a diseased brain it makes tremendous difference because there is ICP is already increased so might be reaching to the uncompensated stage and can tremendously increase the intracranial pressure because we are worried about the blood flow to the brain. If the intracranial pressure goes up, then the cerebral perfusion pressure goes down because the cerebral perfusion pressure is nothing, mean arterial pressure minus ICP. If you increase the ICP, so mean if you keep the main, maintain the uh, mean arterial pressure the same, then central venous pressure, uh, sorry, cerebral perfusion pressure is reduced. Normally, ICP is 10 to 15 millimeter mercury. Mean arterial pressure is around about 100, something like that. And if you take that out, it is about 70 to 75 millimeter mercury is cerebral perfusion pressure, which has to be kept. So that there should be a normal perfusion of the brain. There should be normal supply of the oxygen as per demand of the brain. If the brain's demand increases, the blood flow increases also. That's the neurogenic control of uh, cerebral blood flow. So these things we have discussed earlier in the two lectures. Then we went through the, now then we should know how much is oxygen required per 100 gram of the brain. So about three mils per 100 gram of brain is required for metabolism. It's called CMRO2, Cerebral Metabolic Rate of Oxygen Utilization. 
थ्री मेल्स इज अ स्मॉल अमाउंट थ्री मेल्स पर हंड्रेड ग्राम पर मिनट इज रिक्वायर्ड इफ इट इज फोर्टी ग्राम सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई विथ थ्री मेल इट्स अबाउट फोर्टी टू टू फिफ्टी मेल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज रिक्वायर्ड सो सो इफ दिस मच ऑक्सीजन इज नॉट सप्लाइड बिकॉज ऑफ लैक ऑफ ब्लड सप्लाई टू द ब्रेन देन देर इज अस्कीम ऑफ द ब्रेन सब्सटेंस दैट लीड्स टू इन्फॉक्शन so first is infu- in infu- ischemia then it becomes infarction and that part of the brain becomes dead so other problem which can arise is if you tremendous increase of blood flow into the brain under certain pressure if the pressure is increased small vessels or if there is weak vessels or there is aneurysm formation in the brain so they burst then you get the uh, blood uh, hemorrhage into the brain substance or hemorrhage into the subarachnoid space so that also comes under stroke so there are strokes there is infarction as well as uh, hemorrhage we have to differentiate both and their management is slightly different from each other so there are three main problems which we have to concentrate on when we are dealing with the neurosurgical patients or neurology patients who has come uh, for uh, for example the management of stroke one is a cerebral blood flow cerebral blood flow depends on the vasodilatation and also on blood pressure itself pressure of the blood and then as there is cmro2 cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen utilization and the third is intracranial pressure intracranial pressure as i indicated depends on the interstitial fluid csf and then it also depends on the venous blood drainage from there so these thing we will have to consider so when we are dealing with these pa- such patients then in general if the patient is undergoing surgery neurosurgical operation then there are few uh, things which we avoid first is avoid the vasodilatation to the brain we should avoid we should take all the possible precaution to not to induce a vasodilatation and other is hypercarbia avoid hypercarbia because uh, blood flow to the brain is directly proportional to the carbon dioxide increase for 1 mm of mercury carbon dioxide increase there is a 4% increase in blood flow to the brain when the pco2 reaches to 80 mm of mercury the blood flow to the brain is doubled one should keep in mind this thing on the other hand if you reduce the carbon dioxide level and goes down to the 20 mm mark is about 40% of cerebral blood flow is reduced then the patient suffers from ischemic vasoconstriction and uh, suffers from ischemia of the brain then hypoxia avoid hypoxia avoid hypercarbia avoid hypotension hypertension avoid pain and anxiety of the patient also ye chalte phirte ja ke us अब पेनफुल स्टिमुलाइ देते हैं दैट्स वेरी डेंजरस टू दी पेशेंट दीज पेशेंट शुड नॉट बी गिवन एनी पेन स्टिमुलाइ देर शुड बी अदर वे ऑफ असेसिंग द न्यूरोलॉजिकल और ग्लासको को मस्केल देन यू ट्राई टू डिक्रीज द सेरिब्रल एक्टिविटी ऑल्सो बाई गिव एक्सडेशन टू दीज पेशेंट देन ऑल्सो अवॉइड द इंक्रीज सेरिब्रल एक्टिविटी ऑल्सो अवॉइड how can how can you avoid is if you try not to do such a drug which increases the uh, cerebral activity like ketamine and other drugs which we are in anesthesia we are using it they increase the cerebral activity that will increase the cmr2 that will increase the icp so we have gone through all these things now today you open something and see what is in the cranium we open up the cranium and lift the flap and then see that sub- supratentorial tumors be there can be supratentorial tumor there can be infratentorial tumors also infratentorial is usually posterior fossa operation we do and supratentorial is all the uh, if there might be hematoma or might be uh, there are some tumors there so they have to resect the tumor out so anesthetic goals are the same which are we mentioned in general so you must know what type of problem is there in the supratentorial area what type of tumor is how big is the tumor and what will be the effect whether the brain is shifted to the other side or not and what will happen after the removal of this brain tumor so you should have always or already in your brain any anesthetist who is doing it you know you will have to provide the immobility during operation of course there will be immobility pre operatively and post operatively also 
and we should control the vital sign and we should give brain relaxation. What is a brain re relaxation? That I'll discuss at the end. What is a brain relaxation? We will be using this word again and again. Brain should be relaxed. It's not the muscle. It's not the person who should be relaxed. So it's the brain. We should make the brain relaxed. Then always assure, there is, always assure that there is adequate cerebral perfusion pressure. Cerebral perfusion pressure is nothing mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure. Uh, intracranial pressure is nothing but the interaction of the brain content with the cranium inside. It is a closed cavity. Then anesthetic goal in these patients, if there is supratentorial tumors is allow swift anesthetic emergence. It depends how big is the how big is the tumor, how big is the pathology we are going to remove. If it is very big, so it should not be swift anesthetic emergence. Then it should be it should be keep the patient at least 24 to 48 hours on the ventilator and keep it relaxed and you properly ventilate the patient. Then neurological assessment. So when the patient comes out, you should do the immediately neurological assessment also. Treat and prevent hypertension, coughing, and respiratory compromise. So you will strictly see the ABC, and you will strictly see the patient is completely relaxed, is not coughing. If you cough, you create a positive pressure to the thorax. If there is increase in positive pressure, pressure you decrease the gradient in the extra thoracic region and the intrathoracic region so the gradient will be reduced and the venous return from the upper part of the body will be reduced and that will increase the intracranial pressure. So these are the minor things but they are very important things to keep an eye in these patients. Now special situation like if there is an intracranial mass lesion plus full stomach the patient has come as an emergency and they have to anesthetize the patient who has got a full stomach so this will delay the gastric emptium, rapid sequence induction in these patients. We do rapid sequence induction. There is a separate topic, what is rapid sequence induction? Then you will be used anesthetic agent, particularly thiopentone or propofol and ask the assistant to apply the cricoid pressure. Now applying a cricoid pressure to prevent the vomiting or regurgitation and aspiration into the lung for that purpose. Then head should be up 10 to 15 degree in on the operating table. It's not in the ICU bed or not in the ordinary ward bed. But in the ice in the theater it should be 10 to 15 degree up. Now cricoid pressure is a, itself is a separate topic. That what is the cricoid pressure? Where do you apply it? How much should be the pressure? Who should be applied the, uh, this cricoid pressure? When, up to what time the cricoid pre pressure should be kept? These are small questions which they are asked in a cricoid pressure. An initiatives who is dealing with it, he should know it. Who is the person who first started this cricoid pressure? Pata kya tha? Isko, another name for cricoid pressure is Salix maneuver. S E W L I C K S S apostrophe Salix maneuver. Special situation, for example, you are giving, using saxamethonium. Always keep in your mind when you are using saxamethonium, it will increase the pressure level. It will also increase the intracranial pressure because of fasciculation, right? Yeah, you should know the mechanism. So. Uh, this is not time to discuss it, but I, if I ask why, how it increase the potassium and how it increase the ICP. So alternative way, you can use a bacronium, 0.2 to 0.25 milligram per kilogram body weight, large dose, or you can use rocketonium, intubating tube, intubating dose. Now intracranial mass plus difficult airway, airway is a paramount. You are going to anesthetize the patient for supratentorial pathology. Now, if there is a uh, difficult airway and you have got intracranial uh, pathology also, the most important is airway. Concentrate on airway. Forget about the brain that time. 
because it is the airway if you do something wrong with the airway you will kill the patient right then desperate attempts now if the person one person that tries to put the tube down cannot pass the tube the other one say, let me go let me have a go let me have a go like this don't do like this there should not be multiple attempts on intubation because it will increase the intracranial pressure and that will damage the brain another possibility you can do the awake sedated fiber optic intubation so but you should have a maximum control over it and minimal airway trauma it doesn't mean that you should go on trying with a uh, fiber optic intubation for for long period you just try it and go there so if you can't then stop it right procedure sedation you give fentanyl midazolam or droperidol then propofol so then you go ahead with it i have just pointed out the points you keep in your mind when you are anesthetizing such patient now now there is a mass and difficult airway local anesthetic application into the larynx and local anesthetic nebulization right then local anesthetic infiltration through the transtracheal through the which membrane cricothyroid membrane between the cricoid cartilage and thyroid cartilage that is a membrane you put the needle in attach the syringe with it ask the patient the patient is conscious ask the patient to take deep breath and when and then ask the patient to breathe out when they are going to start out then to spray into the trachea because it will not only uh, numb the mucosa of the trachea but it also numb the mucosa under surface of the vocal cords also right that's the idea because if you are giving local anesthetic into the mouth into the larynx from the upper side so you will numb the whole uh, laryngopharynx and the upper side of the vocal cord also but the under surface of vocal cord is numbed by the uh, cricothyroid membrane uh, in infiltration through the cricothyroid membrane i used to do bronchoscopy so only with this thing that i give them uh, spray into the mouth and then uh, through the cricothyroid membrane we inject local anesthetic so there is no need to give any sedation treat and increase with blood pressure like a labetalone this alpha and beta blocker esmolol beta blocker nitroglycerin is obviously vasodilator so if icp is not raised then you use nitroglycerin if icp is raised then you give nitroglycerin it will cause vasodilation so the so blood flow per unit time going to the brain will be increased so we want to avoid that that there should not be increase in the blood flow now if there is an intracranial mass plus bronchospasm patient comes with asthmatic attack and we are going to anesthetize the patient so and it is an emergency so pre operative period you evaluate the lung functions then you can give theophylline theophylline the example of theophylline is amenophylline amenophylline it is phosphodiesterase inhibitor so but they also cause theophylline cerebral vasoconstriction these circulation to the brain goes opposite to peripheral circulation and the pulmonary circulation also respond opposite to peripheral circulation you have to pata hi hai you know it ha sir to hala le to nahi pata tab bhi hala de sir to opposite hota hai jo bahar wale vaso delta hai andar vaso constriction karte hain brain mein lekin baad mein chitrate se which is using the probovalve they are vaso constricted in the cerebral vessels then special attention should be paid adequate anesthesia adequate airway humidification adequate oxygenation bar bar ye aayega aapko the depth of anesthesia should be deep patient should be properly paralyzed and should be proper oxygenation and control ventilation control ventilation mean you control the level of pco2 because we bring the pco2 between 30 20 to 35 to 30 or maximally up to 25 if you rate take it up to 25 to 20% so it will 
cause it will reduce 40% of the blood flow to the brain that is damaging it will cause ischemia of the brain right so. now integrally mass for bronchoscience induction propofol is preferred maintenance is isoflurane or any inhalation anesthetic except enfluorin enfluorin also increase the neuronal activity increase fio2 if if it is required now if there is a occurrence of bronchospasm should be evaluated all the time okay, during anesthesia the bronchus patient can go into bronchoconstriction now if required you you be, will be 100% sure that the tube is in the trachea it has not gone into one bronchus some people do very very fast intubation then tie cut you know no it's always sequence you intubate hold the tube over there then you inflate the cuff then you assess it once you have assessed it you have inflated the cuff then you fix it right is the is the sequence mein jaye yahan ke jaldi ki gadbad hogi fir wahan mein then could be there anaphylaxis to drugs also it can induce bronchoconstriction could be aspiration aap apni phurti dikhate hain usse ho sakta hai patient has regurgitated and aspirated while you are intubating the patient one should be kept in mind then you might have induced a brain uh, barotrauma while putting the mask on the face and you are squeezing the back if you are given too much gas or if there is already some problem the lung was already going to be ruptured so you can induce barotrauma that should be kept because when you are auscultating you should see it and then you look at the saturation then look at the blood gases also 100% oxygen is given before you during induction and then you deepen the anesthesia as far as possible right deepen doesn't mean that you concentrate only on anesthesia concentrate at the patient also right now still on that occurrence of bronchospasm now the bronchospasm has happened while the patient has been given anesthesia now inhalation all the inhalation anesthetic agents they are bronchodilators you increase the inhalation concentration iv thiophilin you can give during operation or during uh, maintenance of anesthesia you start your amanofilin infusion it is a direct smooth muscle relaxer then you can use terbutaline also right now avoid air trapping air trapping means you always look at that that whether there is going to be induced peep or not so all the ventilators there should be provision once a patient is on ventilator you always see how much is peep built up in these patients if the peep is building up it means there is a trapping of gas if there is a trapping of gas eventually it is going to lead to the barotrauma so then decrease cerebral venous return you should keep an eye on on that also that all the patient has got bronchospasm it has increased the intrathoracic pressure but at the same time you should see whether it is hindering the venous return from the brain or not so you will have to adjust the position of the patient also then blood gas analysis frequently should be once the patient has gone into bronchospasm even if it is relieved you should do frequent because this neurosurgical operation sometimes they last for 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours 8 hours 12 hours 18 hours is a record uh, i have I, myself i have need stay for 18 hours to go on changing the shifts so so one should do the frequent blood gases it will cost but it will benefit the patient also you can uh, change your management also then most important is entitled co2 no sorry it is it is entitled co2 is not reliable because there is a bronchospasm there is nothing carbon dioxide coming out we will think of oh, carbon dioxide very less coming out but you should look at the difference of pco2 minus entitled co2 that gradient that is important gradient of paco2 minus peco2 so that that will give you the idea that there is a span so why that's why the carbon dioxide is not coming out in the expired gas right that's very important if the patient has got intracranial mass lesion plus has got a 
cardiac dysfunction. There is much history of congestive heart failure, low ejection fraction, severe coronary artery disease. So it is a high risk patient. So you take up all the monitoring precautions. You mo monitor the patient properly. It is better to put the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure catheter in. To put the catheter in and push it up to the pulmonary, measure the pulmonary wedge pressure. And if it is possible, transesophageal echocardiography. You put the transesophageal uh, probe inside, and it should be behind the behind the heart, and that will give you a lot of information about the cardiac contractility. It will help the monitor myocardial performance, identify the severe volume underloading and over overloading myocardial ischemia, and it will help to use of the osmotic diuretic salts. So, the, any patient, I've delivered one lecture in Nishtar uh, when there was a conference at the Society of Anesthesiology, how to monitor the fluid therapy when the patient is on ventilator. Then the CVP is, is not reliable. CVP does not help you. It's the, um, it, you'll have a, uh, this uh, transesophageal echocardiography. That is called uh, uh, that gives you a lot of information what is happening to the heart and accordingly you give the fluid to the patient. That's the best way. I'll, I'll deliver one lecture on that also. If the time allows me or it allows me, my life allows me. So that's a beautiful lecture. Now if there is a craniofacial surgery, you've got face injury also, injury to the cranium also, and there is the intracranial problem also. Now, how many people are involved? Now, base, skull-based surgery, we call, you call ENT surgeon, then eye surgeon comes, then plastic surgeon comes, then neurosurgeon comes. There are four surgeons who will be operating. Why do you have to decide whether you're going to put the oral tube or you are going to do the tracheostomy, the best tracheostomy, because you are away from the patient and moreover, moreover they are operating in the same area where your tube is in. Or it's better to plan your tracheostomy and put the tracheostomy before the, uh, you start giving an anesthesia to these patients. Neurophysiological monitoring should be also done. Motor or sensory assessment of cranial nerves, they are monitored also because they are operating on the base of the skull also. Right. Short technique must relaxant are given. Blood loss is measured. Short technique means if you want to reverse it and see what is the effect on the brain stem. If you want to assess that, so it's very rarely done that you wake the patient up and then see or you make make the patient light and you take the relaxant effect away and then she see, see the activity. But it's very rare. So it's better to, surgeons should be more vigilant, should be using a microscope, particularly when they're doing post-course operation. Air embolism monitoring. Air embolism, because the head is up and they're operating on the cranium and they're operating on the neck, air can be sucked in. It can cause air embolism. But if you got central venous catheter in, into the central vein, and you have put the precordial Doppler here, something like stethoscope, like that gives you noise. Even 0.2 mils can be detected with that. It's a very small amount it detects, it gives you noise. And uh, so if you think that air has gone into the heart and will be going into the pulmonary circulation, it will be blocking the pulmonary circulation. That's a dangerous thing. So you push the CVP catheter down, take up to the apex of the right ventricle, put the patient on the left lateral position, head down. So where will the air collect? In the apex of the right heart, aspirated. It takes only one minute. Quickly, that's the Durand's position, D-U-R-R-A-N-S apostrophe, Durand's position. Left lateral position, head down, push the CVP catheter, already you got CVP catheter, push the CVP catheter, goes into the right ventricle, and air goes into the apex and you suck it out. Right. So immediately you can see the noise has disappeared, which Precordial Doppler is always telling is already telling you. Antidal CO2, antidal CO2 will be reduced. 
once there is air embolism it will block that vision of gas right then and tidal nitrogen also that are, then cp line air aspiration and pressure as i told you durons Dur position avoid pneumoencephalus pneumoencephalus means your air has gone into the brain how can you avoid avoid excessive csf drainage you know bar bar drain so it will create negative pressure create kare ga and air will be sucked there avoid coughing avoid sneezing all these things their steps are taken to avoid the nemo uh, encephalopathy posterior fossa mass lesion posterior fossa operations are usually done either in sitting position and head like this or in the prone position or some people do on the lateral position if in posterior fossa on one side is a tumor it is mostly in 90% cases it is meningiomas and it's very difficult operation it is done under microscope and if it is successful if the whole tumor is taken out it is not a, that much malignant it is a locally malignant tumor so it's a 100% recovery and this may surgeon ko bhi sabar hona padega sabar karna padega thoda sa 10 12 घंटे तो ऐसे ही लग जाते हैं इसको ऑपरेशन हमारी एक आया फिर रही है ना मनिजोमा के साथ और उसका निश्चर में होना है उसके लिए दुआ करें तो माइक्रोस्कोप से बात देखते हैं उसको क्योंकि वहाँ से सारी क्रेनियल नर्व्स निकल रही हैं वाइटल सेंटर है वहाँ पे रेस्पिरेटरी सेंटर का ऑडियोवास्कुलर सेंटर यू हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल इन ऑपरेटिंग यू शुड नो द नेचर एंड सिविलिटी ऑफ द ट्यूमर्स सेलेक्ट अप्रोप्रिएट मॉनिटरिंग टेक्निक देन फेमिली राइज विद वेरियस पोजिशन ऑफ द पेशेंट वैदर इट इज अ प्रोन पोजिशन लेटर पोजिशन और इट इज इन दिटिंग अपोजिशन बीवेयर ब्रेन स्टेम मॉनिटरिंग मैथड्स provide brain relaxation timely emergence from anesthesia so you should have a good control on anesthesia patient should be properly sedated properly brain relaxed and should be controlling the ventilation should appreciate the indication for post op intubation and indication for post op ventilation you should be already be careful uh, mentally ready that these patient has might be needing post op ventilation because there are crane nerves involved and so many things are involved it is better it is my advice will be it is better because it, to plan your ventilation carry on with the ventilation at least 24 to 48 hours when everything is all right then try to take the to wean the patient off the ventilator don't hurry up it should take it very easy now neurosurgical anesthesia is a, a very delicate anesthesia the same things i'm going saying again and again in every slide because these are very important points when i came from england there were three anesthetists who were foreign qualified two in the aha university hospital aha university started working in 85 they came later than we i came in 80 and was a tipu he came also in 81 or something like that i was the first person in south punjab and in in lahore there were only professor calls so we are the people who are foreign qualified and out of all these people we were the two people who loved giving neurosurgical anesthesia me and dr fozia from our hospital and she used to love it all but when i came here to meri ustad jo kehne lagi ustad ne jo meri senior thi dr khushi ve kidi kidi ek list na leni hai main ke neurosurgical bade hairan hue ke yaar ये अपने आप मौत को पुकार रहे फिर दूसरा मैं कहा न्यू नेटल सर जी तीसरा ऑब्स्ट्रेटिक सर जी तीन मैंने कहा दे दे मैं कहा बाकी और भी कोई देने तो वो भी दे दे तो इंटेंसिव केयर तो मैंने स्टार्ट कर ली थी तो इससे न्यूरो सर्जिकल नर्सिया से लोग भागते हैं फॉर टू रीजन वन इज वेरी लेंथी ऑपरेशन एंड द सेकेंड इज वेरी डेलीकेट ऑपरेशन एनी एवरी बॉडी कैन नॉट डू इट विल हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी फाइन अनी स्टेज टू डू इट राइट इसमें बहुत सारी चीज़ों पे आउटकम ऑफ द न्यूरोसर्जिकल न्यूरोसर्जरी इज वन ऑफ द मेन कंट्रीब्यूटर टूवर्ड्स अ गुड आउटकम इज अ गुड न्यूरोसर्जिकल एनेसिया एंड पोस्ट ऑफ केयर इन गुड इंटेंसिव केयर यूनिट नाउ हाउ टू इंड्यूस ब्रेन रिलैक्सेशन आई हैव बीन यूजिंग द वर्ड ब्रेन रिलैक्सेशन 
फॉर सेफ ओपनिंग एंड क्लोजिंग ऑफ द ड्यूरा ये ड्यूरे लिखा हुआ है ड्यूरा है ई को ए समझ लें ठीक है ड्यूरा जब वेन यू ओपन द फ्लैप द टेक द फ्लैप वे देन यू हैव टू ओपन द ड्यूरा एंड इफ द इंटरग्री इंटेंशन इज हाई देन द ड्यूरा द ब्रेन सबसे स्टार्ट कमिंग आउट सो इसलिए इफ द ब्रेन इज रिलैक्स एंड यू आर टेकन ऑल द स्टेप टू लोअर द इंटरग्रीन प्रेशर देन इट विल नॉट कम आउट राइट देन मिनिमम ब्रेन रिटेक्शन If the brain is relaxed, then they don't have to put the relax uh, this uh, retractors too much. Abdominal retractors, you know, they get to put a lot of tension on them. Theater assistant be tension on them, consistent be tension on them. So, if they tension, then the other brain can neuron will die. Okay? So, there should be minimal brain retraction. Continue hyperventilation till the ear is closed. When you are ventilating these patients, you hyperventilate up to the PCO2 of around about thirty. About thirty-five, thirty, and twenty-five, according to your response and according to your level of uh, PCO2. Take then when they close, closure is tight. Then continue hyperventilation. Hypocarbia increase the response of the brain to opioids. ये भी याद रखो ओपियर यू कैन फ्रीली के इफ यू आर इंड्यूसिंग हाइपोकार्बिया ना ओपियर कैन बी सेफली यूज नॉर्मली पीपल से डोंट यूज ओपियर बिकॉज दे आर डूइंग इट विल रेज द इंटरग्रेन प्रेशर हाउ विल इट इंक्रीज द इंटरग्रेन प्रेशर इफ इट अफेक्ट्स द रेस्पिरेशन इफ इट अफेक्ट्स द रेस्पिरेशन इट विल रेज द सी ओ टू इफ यू रेज द सी ओ टू यू विल इंक्रीज द इंटरग्रेन प्रेशर बट इफ यू आर इंड्यूसिंग हाइपोकार्बिया देन यू कैन सेफली यूज ओपियर्स then diuretic therapy manitol is one of them theek hai as i told you in the beginning that when you are starting anesthesia you want you are going to put the patient to sleep ask the patient if the patient is awake ask the patient hyperventilate ke lambe lambe saans le thode se lambe saans liye hote if you measure the co2 co2 has gone down and it will decrease the cerebral blood flow by causing the constriction of the vessels which are going taking the blood to the brain ek step aapne le liya aisu log karenge theek hai fir uske baad aap dete hain dexamethasone it will also lower the icp uske baad aap dete hain propofol ya thiopentol it will reduce the neuronal activity that will also on the one hand lower the icp on the other hand it will decrease the cmro2 also right so you already have your head is up as you are hyperventilating you are washing the co2 then your head is slightly up and you are draining the venous fluid from there so you are already taking all the steps to to relax the brain and lower the icp right you are give manitol abhi bhi surgeon kehta hai ki brain bada turgid hai zara It's difficult to retract. Then you give manitol. Intercellular fluids, you know, the tissue go nikal the. Or maybe if you say that maybe no, now you do something. Then you take the CSF, you put the catheter into the lumbar space, and you CSF go nikal. Then we say that if you say that you lateral ventricle, me, apna cannula dalle, usse CSF nikale. Then the brain will sit like this. Very comfortably expose the brain. Okay. This is the brain. Okay. This is the brain. Okay. it needs neurosurgical anesthesia needs cooperation between the surgeon and the anesthetist it's very important you go side by side no ye dusre ke sath ye nik ek dusre se lad rahe ho gal par ek nikale ho ki main tu de laga rahe ho ki jaldi kar okay wo keh ke tere mareez cough kar rahe hai isra guzara nahi hota usme theek hai now osmolality should be kept less than 320 normal osmolality is कितनी होती है 285 एटी फाइव टू टू नाइन्टी फाइव सो नॉर्मली वी एन वी आर डीलिंग विद अ पेशेंट हुज गॉड इंट्राक्रेंडियर प्रॉब्लम वी कीप राउंड अबाउट थ्री हंड्रेड एंड टेन दैट इज आइलियल बट नेवर एवर गो अब थ्री हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी तो कीप इट बिलो थ्री हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी नाउ गिव डायूरेटिक्स सिक्सटी मिनट्स बिफोर द ओपनिंग ड्यूर इफ रिक्वायर्ड you want to reduce the blood volume you can give diuretic also to reduce the blood volume by taking the water out blood gases paco2 should be kept between 25 to 30 mm mercury 15 minutes before lifting the flap theek flap ko dalne se pehle aap usko paco2 ko 
اس وقت تک ٹوینٹی فائیو ٹو تھرٹی ملی میٹر پہ رکھتے ہیں تاکہ ایسا نہ ہو کہ برین سویل کرے اس میں آپ بند ہی نہ کر سکے اس کو پراپرٹی بند کر دیے ایک دفعہ ڈھکلا لگا دیا پھر آپ مانیٹر کریں آئی سی پی کو کہ آپ کتنا ہے پھر اس اسٹیپس اپنے جاری رکھیں اس کو دس از کال برین ریلیکسیشن کنٹرولنگ دا آئی سی پی از کال دا برین ریلیکسیشن اینڈ واٹ آر دا فیکٹرز وچ افیکٹ دا آئی سی پی وہ سارے کو کنٹرول کریں کچھ فیکٹر اندر ہیں کرین کے کرین کے کچھ باہر ہیں ٹھیک ہے بڑا آسان کام ہے یہ مشکل نہیں ہے اسیس دا فیکٹر دین کریکٹ اف دیر از اے فار اف دیر از انٹرکن پریشر از بینگ انکریز تو یو آلویز اسیس آل دا ادر فیکٹرز آلسو انٹینسیفائی دا ہائپر وینٹیلیشن ٹو پی اے سی او ٹو ٹو ٹوینٹی فائیو اف اٹ از ریکوائرڈ نارملی راؤنڈ اباؤٹ تھرٹی رکھتے ہیں ہم اف آسمولیٹی اپروچ تھری ہنڈریڈ ٹین پروسیڈ فار فل سے مائل رائٹ اف ایڈیکوٹ ریسپانس ناٹ ایویڈنٹ سبسٹیٹیوٹ تھایو اور پروپوفال فار نائٹروسائڈ پلس آئیسو فلورین یو کین گیو اسمال انکریمنٹیڈ ڈوزیز فار ایگزامپل تھایا پینٹون فائیو ملی گرام تھری ٹو فور ملی گرام پر کلو گرام باڈی ویٹ اور پروپوفال ٹوینٹی تھرٹی ملی گرام ٹو ملی گرام پر کلو گرام پر جی کے لکھا ہوا کے جی ہے پر کلو گرام ٹھیک نا اف امپروز ریٹرن ٹو دا اوریجنل ریجیم ٹھیک سو بڑا امپورٹنٹ ڈیلیکیٹ ڈیلیکیسی ڈپینڈز آن ہاؤ یو کنٹرول یور انٹرکرین یور پریشر اینڈ واٹ آر دا فیکٹر یور فیکٹر انٹرکرین یور پریشر دیٹس ویری امپورٹنٹ فلوئڈ تھراپی پریوینشن آف ہائیپر ولیمیم ہائیپو ولیمیم ہائیپو آسولیلٹی ہائیپر گلاسیمیم یہ چار ایچ پہ غور کریں آپ اٹس اے کی پوائنٹس فار فار دس کنٹرولنگ دا برین ریلیکسیشن ہائیپر ولیمیا ہائیپو ولیمیا ہائیپو آسولیلٹی اینڈ ہائیپر گلاسیمیا اف اٹ از ہائیپر ولیمیا اٹ ول انکریز دا بلڈ فلو ٹو دا برین اف اٹ از ہائیپو ولیمیا اٹ ول کاز ریڈیوس دا بلڈ فلو ٹو دا برین وی رو اٹس کریٹیکل فلو اینڈ دیٹ ول کاز اے اسکیم آف دا برین ہائیپو آسملیلٹی اف دا آسملیلٹی از لیس فلوئڈ اسٹارٹ گوئنگ ان سائڈ دا سیل ٹھیک دیٹ ول کاز انٹر سیل ایڈیما اف اٹ از ہائیپر گلائسیمیا یو ہیو گاٹ یو ہیو گاٹ اے ڈیزیز پارٹ آف دا برین and your blood sugar is raised but oxygen is not reaching there there will be anaerobic metabolism when there is anaerobic metabolism there will be production of lactate when there is lactate production lactate is a vasoparalytic agent it will cause vasodilatation it will increase tremendously the blood flow to the brain it will increase icp so glucose should be glucose controls should be stringent control It should be kept between 120 to 150 millimeter milligram per hundred cc, right? So don't give any glucose straight away. Only indication for giving is if the patient is going into hypoglycemia, or if the patient has gone into ketoacidosis, or the patient is controlling the diabetes in a proper way, in a proper regime. Glucose is omitted unless if there is hypoglycemia, or patient is given glucose insulin regime.